eyes are watering. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Mondays with me, Dr. Crystal. As you can see, we are in a little bit different setting today. This is outside of my house. It has finally turned to nice weather in Indiana, so I had to come outside. I hope you guys don't mind. I tried to go to the very far corner of my yard so you couldn't hear the road as much because I live kind of near a main road, but you might be able to hear it, so I'm sorry. So I'm sure this won't interest a lot of you, so if it doesn't, just click away right now, but I have gotten multiple requests to do a video on how I got to where I am today. So I guess, first of all, where am I today? So currently, my job is working in student health and sports medicine at a university. Absolutely love my job, it is my dream job, and I am so happy. It did, however, take me a very long time to get here. So in my mind, I kind of separate this into four different parts. Five, I guess, if you count high school. In high school, I feel like you essentially are Kind of just preparing yourself to do college. As long as you do well enough to get into college, learn a little bit how to take tests, how to do work. Once you're into college, nobody's really gonna look back at your high school record. So personally, I'm the first one in my family to go to college. I didn't really know much about applying to college or where I should go, what I should do. It was never an option to me. I was always going to go to college. It was just the question of where. And so I chose Central Michigan. So I'm originally from Michigan and I never really even considered leaving the state for undergrad. So I applied to a few schools in Michigan and I ended up going to Central Michigan. The reasons I chose to go to Central is one, it was fairly easy to get into and I knew I could get some scholarship money. And two, a lot of my friends were going there. And of course, coming out of high school, I'm wanting to go where my friends are gonna go. I guess a third reason is it was only about two and a half hours from home. And so that appealed to me. In high school, I already knew that I wanted to do medicine. And one of my favorite teachers in high school was talking to me about choosing a college. He was essentially saying to me, if you went to a bigger college and it would give you a better chance to get into med school, would you do it? kind of pushing me to apply to the bigger universities in the state, like Michigan State or University of Michigan. But at that point, med school was so far in the future, I thought that it was going to happen anyway if it was meant to happen, and I wanted to be where my friends were. So I went to Central, I became a Chippewa, and I do not regret it. So in college, I already knew I wanted to do medicine. The easiest way to transition into medicine is to do a major that includes all the prerequisites. Contrary to popular belief, you do not have to major in biology or chemistry or anything like that. I have friends who are doctors that have majored in all different stuff. A friend who majored in dance, friends who majored in engineering, all different kinds of stuff. But again, I already knew what I wanted to do. I wanted something that kind of encompassed all the stuff that I needed to do so that I wouldn't miss anything. So my major was biomedical sciences, which was essentially biology with the chemistry classes that you needed to apply to professional school. Now I remember that in my major, you needed one more chemistry class in order to have a chemistry minor. My major didn't require to have a minor. I didn't take that chemistry class. I hate chemistry. I did it because I had to do it. I will say that organic chemistry probably almost kept me out of med school. Um, I got a C in Orgo 1 and a C plus in Orgo 2. Those were the lowest grades I got in college. I just did not know how to study, did not care to learn about chemistry. Honestly, I think I could have done better in the classes if I knew how to study, but at that point, I thought that cramming for one or two days before the exam was studying, which I was soon to learn that is not a good way to study. So essentially, my goal was to kind of get through everything as fast as I could, so I wasn't planning to take a gap year, I wasn't planning to do anything else in between doing college and going to med school. So when it came around to my third year of undergrad, I was doing pretty well in school still, and so I started studying for the MCAT. I had this set of books. I honestly do not remember what they were, but I didn't take a class or anything. I kind of just took about an hour a day for the month or two before the test and would just look through these books. Again, not the right way to study. I just did not know how to study yet. I forgot to mention that I also took a few full-length practice tests. So I was studying these books, I don't know if I really felt prepared to take the test. I felt pretty sure that I was gonna just like do awful on the chemistry part. So the day came, I told myself if I got a 28 or higher, I would just go ahead and apply to med school. If I got lower than a 28, then I was gonna retake it and 
try again before I applied to med school because I wanted to give myself at least an okay chance of getting in. So when I say a 28, I know that doesn't even relate anymore. Um, there is a totally new scoring system now. When I took the test, you could get between a three and a 45. A lot of schools, the average was like around 30. So this thing I found said the old MCAT score was between three and 45, where the 50th percentile was about 25 and the new MCAT um, is a scaled score with a number between 472 and 528 with a 50th percentile score around 500. So, so hopefully that helps. Anyways, got my score back. It was a 28. I met my bare minimum. So I was like, sweet, not taking this again. I'm going to go ahead and apply. So don't quote me on this. It was a very long time ago, but I believe my cumulative GPA from undergrad was a 363. So honestly, and this is the truth, I was searching online what are the easiest med schools to get into? I just wanted to get into med school, wanted to be a doctor, didn't care. So also while I was an undergrad, I did some volunteering. I volunteered in the ER where essentially I was like bringing people drinks, but a lot of times there wasn't a lot to do. So I was just walking around seeing how people were doing, but at least I got to spend some time in the hospital, got to put it on my resume. Probably the most worthwhile volunteering I did was at the hospice house. I got some really good experience with patients there, dealing with end of life issues, and I felt like I actually made a difference with some of these people. Um, so if you have a hospice near you and you have a chance to volunteer, I highly recommend it. I also did a little bit of research because you know the schools like to see that research. And so the research I did was with fruit flies. I hated it, but I powered through with my friend just so you know we could have it and we weren't missing anything on our applications. So I think in total, I ended up applying to 10 med schools and I got interviews at two. And those two were Wayne State in Detroit and Michigan State in East Lansing. So I went for the interviews at both of those schools. I remember specifically at Wayne State, the guy asked me, so what's up with chemistry? Because all my grades were pretty good. For the most part, I had all A's. I think in general chemistry one and two, I had B's of some sort. And then I already told you in organic chemistry, I had a C and a C plus. And so they were like, what's going on? And I was honest. I said, I don't love chemistry. I'm not very good at it. Honestly, I would like to see what I could do in those classes now, but I will never put myself through that again. So I ended up on the wait list at both of those schools and I was like, shoot, what am I gonna do? Because I'm about to graduate here and I don't have a plan if I'm not in med school yet. And so I actually applied to this post back program that my friend had gone to um, with hopes that if I didn't get off the wait list, I would get into that school and do that for a couple of years and hopefully get into their med school and do school that way. So I had gone through the application and things were looking pretty good with getting into that school. And then I actually got off the wait list at both schools. So then I had a decision to make. And at that point in my life, I really thought I wanted to do surgery. And so I wanted to be where all the trauma was. So I decided to go to Wayne State in Detroit. The day after I got off the first wait list, I actually got accepted to the post bag program, but I told them I had gotten into med school and so I would not be coming there. So yay, I got into med school. I was so happy. It was honestly at that point, the happiest day of my life. I was so excited. I felt like everything I had done up until that point was worth it. My dad was so excited. My mom was so excited. It was great. But now I had to go to med school. Honestly, the first day when I showed up and was going through all the orientation stuff, I thought that there must have been a mistake. There's no way that I actually got into med school and I'm about to start here and be a doctor in four years. And I was just so nervous. So luckily it wasn't a mistake. I started school and I honestly just studied all the time. Because like I said, before I got there, I didn't know how to study and I was so scared that I was gonna get to med school and fail out. And so I just literally took my books home. I didn't really know anybody at school. So I just was studying every single day. Now I still wasn't a good studier. I would honestly just sit there and like stare at the same page for like hours, but I did it. I made it through. Most of my tests I scored about average. Ours were on like Z-score, so I was usually somewhere right near the middle. My goal was always to get a little bit higher than average because if you're above average in a room full of doctors, then that's pretty good, I feel like. They actually told us in school, P equals MD. If you pass, you're gonna get your MD. I don't know if that's reassuring to people who are not doctors. So I don't know how much you guys know about med school, but the first and second year are basically just book work, tests, studying your butt off, 
it's kind of awful, but everyone around you is doing the same thing, so it's fine. So I studied, I passed, I didn't fail any tests. At that point, I still thought I wanted to do surgery. After my first year of med school, I did an externship in surgery and was in the OR, thought it was pretty cool, did a little bit of research as well during that externship, and still thought I was gonna do surgery. So when you're done with second year, you have to take the dreaded step one. And so I remember this time, I think after that time, I get a sense of what it's like when people have to be in solitary confinement. So I remember I was in my apartment. I only left a couple times, like in the full five weeks that I was studying. I remember there was one time I hadn't left in like almost a week and I walked to the gas station at the corner to get some candy and like it literally felt surreal. And so I literally just like studied from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed for five weeks straight. If you don't know about step one, it's essentially the test that determines what you can do. If you bomb step one, you are never gonna get into a competitive specialty. You're pretty much screwed. Uh, and so it's very, very, very anxiety provoking. On the morning of step one, luckily I was leaving about two hours early, but I locked myself out of the house without my car keys. All I had is my first aid book, which is like the study Bible for step one. And I had my phone, thank God. And so I was sitting out front crying and I called my friend and she came to pick me up and we went and it was fine. So I took down my scores for you so I could tell you. My step one score was 231. So that's a pretty good score. It's not like outstanding, but it also doesn't suck. So I was like, sweet, I can probably do mostly what I wanna do. So I start third year. My very first rotation was OB. It was just cool because I had not been on a rotation before, so it was fine. There were a couple residents who were me, and I remember, and um, then the rest of the year started rolling on. I did my surgery rotation, and I actually didn't love it. It had finally gotten to the point where I had to spend pretty much two months straight in the OR, and I was like, I don't think this is what I wanna do, and it was so stressful because the whole time I thought I was gonna do surgery. So then I started getting really stressed. I come up on my family medicine rotation. Family medicine was the one thing that I knew that I did not want to do. So boring, you're gonna do physical, see colds, like why would anybody wanna do family medicine? But it was so much more than I imagined and I had really, really good teachers on that rotation. It was really fun to see babies in one room and the next room we would see like an elderly person. And that is when I discovered that primary care sports medicine was a thing. So I got to work one day with this guy who was one of the primary care docs for the Detroit Lions. And I was like, this is so cool. Like, how did I not know about this? And so about halfway through that rotation, I was convinced I was gonna do family medicine. I was excited because family is not the most competitive specialty to get into, so I was pretty sure I could go where I wanted to go. So I was super excited. I was on the family medicine train and I was ready to apply to residency. So I think in total I applied to about 20 something residencies. At that time I had been in Michigan my whole life. I was ready to go out and see somewhere else, so I kind of applied everywhere along the East Coast. So my best friend was also applying to family medicine, and so we applied to all the same residencies, and we went on a residency tour. We left Detroit for a whole month and just went all the way down to Florida and all the way back and did a bunch of interviews, and it was super awesome. And by far, my favorite place, had the coolest people, had everything I wanted, told me I could start covering high school football my intern year, was Wake Forest. and so. I ranked Wake Forest number one, got to match day, and was lucky enough to match there. I was so excited, and so I was ready to move to Winston-Salem. I realized I missed step two in there. Step two doesn't super matter because you're already applying when you take it, but you basically don't wanna bomb it and you wanna do better than you did on step one. And so um, I took step two, and my score was 244. So it was a little bit better than step one but again not super amazing not bad it was fine wasn't going to keep me from getting the residency i wanted so i started at wake already knowing that i was going to want to do a fellowship in sports medicine so right away i got involved with coverage it's really hard intern year intern year is rough no matter what specialty you're in you're working 12 hour days most days and it's just exhausting 
and there's not much time to do anything else. But I knew I wanted to do sports, so I got involved with covering high school football and tried to make that whenever I could. And then anytime they were doing like sports physicals or they needed extra help with something, I tried to get there if I could. Second year in family medicine slows down a little bit, so I was able to do a lot more in terms of sports coverage. I started to help cover the Winston-Salem Dash, which is the minor league baseball team in Winston-Salem. I started helping to cover Winston-Salem State, which is a Division II college there. And then again, was doing high school football, was doing extra coverage whenever I could, in addition to my other clinical responsibilities and doing the stuff I needed to do for my rotations that I was on. So that all continued till third year when it was finally time to apply to a sports medicine fellowship. By that point, I had done a ton of coverage and I had presented a poster at AMSSM, which is this national sports medicine meeting. So I'm not exactly sure, but I think I applied to around 18 sports medicine fellowships and I did interviews at 10, which I feel like is about average to a little bit on the high side for what people do for a sports medicine fellowship. But I really wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to go. I knew I wanted really good ultrasound training. I knew that I wanted to do Division I coverage so that I had that on my resume when I was trying to apply to jobs. Um, and I knew I wanted just a wide variety so I could learn all the stuff I needed to know. And so I took interviews at 10 places. By far, the program that impressed me the most was UNC. And so I ranked them number one. And again, I was so lucky to match there with one other fellow and she was amazing also. So after I matched into fellowship, I still had to take my family medicine boards. And so it was hard to study after all that time because I hadn't really studied super hard for something since the steps. And so I tried my best and I did a bunch of questions and took some practice tests and I did pretty well on my boards. I don't have my score, it doesn't really matter, you just have to pass your boards. And so I passed my family medicine boards, was board certified in family medicine before starting my sports medicine fellowship at UNC. I had an awesome year training at UNC. They got me up to speed on all the stuff I needed to learn. And obviously you never stop learning, so I still have a ton to learn. But by about halfway through my fellowship, I started to feel pretty confident in sports medicine, started to feel confident in ultrasound guided procedures. And it was just really exciting because all this time I had wanted to do sports medicine and I was finally doing it, finally learning it. I had tons of amazing mentors there who I still feel like I could ask questions if I need to. So then it came time to start applying for jobs. Before I started fellowship, I was a little bit burnt out on residency. I mean, residency is exhausting and it really takes it out of you. And so I was like, after I do my fellowship, I'm just doing sports medicine. I'm never doing family medicine. I was kind of over primary care, but I think what I really needed was a break from it because as I went through my fellowship, I kind of realized I didn't want to lose what I had learned in primary care. And so I started applying to jobs. I was applying to jobs at just ortho clinics where I would do sports medicine. I was also applying to jobs that would be some family medicine or some urgent care. Then on one of the sports medicine boards, the job of my dreams popped up. It was at a major university doing student health, which would be just general medicine with the student population and also sports medicine with division one athletics. And so I was so excited about this. These are not jobs that pop up very often. I wasn't sure how good of a shot I had at it because I was just coming fresh out of fellowship and I wasn't sure if they were maybe looking for someone with more experience, but I was like, what can it hurt? I threw my application in, wrote up a cover letter, told them why I wanted the job and I got an interview. And as we all know, the rest is history. I got the job. I work in student health and sports medicine. I get to cover the athletic teams and it's amazing. So someone was actually retiring, so I had to wait a little bit to start. So I had about a four month gap between the end of my fellowship and starting this job. So after my fellowship, I had to take my sports medicine boards. So I studied for those, took them, rocked them, and then I kind of just had to wait. So I found plenty to do during that time, of course. I hadn't really had any free time in I can't remember how many years, and so I had a ton of little stuff that I had to do, and um, it was really nice to have some time off. And so I started this job in November, so I've been doing it about six months now. Absolutely love it. I love working with the athletic teams, and I love working with the general student population. These students are so cool, and I think I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I kind of get to live vicariously through all the cool things that they're doing, 
and I just love it. Okay, so that feels like it was very long and I don't know if any of you will find any of that information useful, but if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I will try to answer them all. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next week.